This message is brought to you by the GOT, the best league of all time. <laughs> What's up guys? We're back for episode 3 today of the uh, GOT showcases and today we have my good friend Jose's team and Jose's team is looking really powerful guys. Uh, let me try to remember what we left behind right on. Okay, so he has Mega Gardevoir and Polion. Uh, so he's paired already Mega Gardevoir plus Empoleon creates amazing synergy because Mega Gardevoir is weak to steel uh, and to poison and Empoleon resists both of those and Empoleon is weak to fighting and and Gardevoir quad resists that so they create a nice synergy on top of that he also he also has Crobat as a quad fighting resist and it's a ground resist which helps Empoleon he has um, Rotom which factors into that very well as well resisting ground while being immune to ground thanks to Levitate we have a Snorlax and Sock which is an amazing Pokemon because of uh, two amazing abilities uh, in Mold Breaker and Sturdy uh, both are really, really good, and I believe it gets another one if I just go and check here. Um, Jose... It also gets uh, Inner Focus, which uh, is a very, very interesting ability. Uh, able to dodge fake outs from Megalopony and stuff like that, so that's really cool. Mega Metacham and whatnot. So let's just try to get a game here real quick. Um, try to keep it to, uh, keep it to about... I'm going to try to keep these episodes between 15 and 18 minutes, roughly, if I can. I mean, it's not really up to me how long the battle takes. It kind of is, because I'm in control of, uh, like, how often I do Calyx and stuff, which I'm opening right now because I didn't have one open yet. But uh, other than that, like, if, if it's a long game, it's a long game, and, and that's just the way it rolls, so... Uh, let's get rid of this blue that's gonna pop up in a second. There we go. And now we are back here. So I'm doing this quite late at this point. I'm saving this for, uh, I'm recording this uh, between, is it Wednesday? Yes, <laughs> between Wednesday to Thursday uh, so that you guys get this early Thursday morning after it's rendered and uploaded and privated on the channel until uh, until release. You can schedule videos if you guys didn't know. Uh, for those of you that actually don't upload any YouTube videos and just watch, uh, you can schedule them for later and they come out at specific times, which is really, really useful. So the first team we're up against here is Rain. Uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to break with uh, Mega Gardevoir. I do have Thunderbolt, which is something to note. Uh, it's something that can hit uh, Politoed for super effective damage, which is quite nice. Uh, it's more used for, um, for Skarmory. Uh, that's why I have that on there, because we don't have a lot of really good Skarmory checks, except for Rotom. Rotom's not bad. Uh, but I want to lead off here with Sock. Give the impression that I am uh, Focus Sash, as he leads off with Pol Politoed, which isn't bad. Because what I can do here is just go for a safe knockoff. Get rid of an item. Hopefully this Politoed's Damp Rock reduce the amount of rain that his, uh, that his team has. Definitely gotta watch out for that uh, Kingdra. Swampert's not a huge issue because of Rotom. Rotom can always... Uh, do stuff to it. We're gonna get a knockoff off here. Gonna get rid of this Tornadus' Assault Vest. You might think we're sturdy, so he might not want to stay in right here. Uh, but either way, I think my safest play is just to go straight out into Empoleon and get up my rocks. And uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. He's gonna go for a knockoff. Gets rid of our leftovers, not a huge deal. I think rocks are extremely important right here. Uh, even if he has the superpower, which I'm assuming he does, I'm just gonna go straight for Stealth Rocks. It shouldn't be able to knock us out from this range. Uh, Tornadus is not that strong on the physical side, so we should be able to live it. And uh, Empoleon is a, uh, yeah, there you go, there's the live. And Empoleon's a pretty big asset, I would say, uh, to the team. Uh, but not anymore, obviously, being at 20%. In this matchup, I think we can do without. What I'm actually going to do here is predict him to predict uh, my switch into Rotom or Crobat and just go for a roar. Uh, as he does go for a knockoff, there we go, and we're able to get this tornado out of here, switch him out into Kingdra, which is not the best, but not the worst, because he does have to lock himself to, uh, into either a water move or into a uh, dragon move. So if he locks himself into a dragon move, I can go into Mega Gardevoir after and fire off a Will-O-Wisp, burn that Ferrothorn on the switch. If he goes for a water move, then we'll uh, go into Snorlax and start setting up some curses, potentially. We'll see from there. But uh, I'm just going to fire off a uh, Torrent Boosted Scald in case he doesn't want to stay in here for whatever reason. He might see that I have options after he gets his kill, so we'll see. But uh, rocks do look like they're up for a while until that um, Kabutops can spin. I'm gonna have to watch out for. I'm looking for my win con this game, and it seems to be Rotom. Rotom puts in a ton of work on his team. The only problem is that Rotom uh, gets weakened quite easily. Not having the move recover and only having pain split is a little bit of a hindrance. He's gonna go for Scald, so uh, that's quite nice. We can easily go out into Rotom right here if we choose. Uh, I think Rotom is the appropriate play, uh, and I think just Will-O-Wisp uh, might be the play. Yeah, I'm gonna go on into Rotom. Uh, he's more than likely Specs, um, so I, I will just fire off a Will-O-Wisp right here. I don't expect him to stay in on a potential uh, Volt Switch. It's gonna, 
gonna do a good amount of damage, not too much, maybe about 25 to 30 percent. But either way, I mean, this Kingjar already came in on rocks. Okay, he does stay in. Goes for a Skull, does not get the burn, luckily. he's gonna. Uh, we're gonna go for the Will-O-Wisp. And uh, what's good here is that we still have our leftovers. Even if he burns us, uh, if he switches out, he's switching out into something that more than likely has more health than us, except if it's uh, Tornadus. And if he stays in, then he knocks us down low enough to where Pain Split will give us a good amount of health back. There's a Skull, gets off 45%, does not get the burn. Pain Split is gonna bring us back beyond that range of where he can knock us out. And now this Kingdra is extremely low. Uh, and I can just fire off a Volt Switch right here. Uh, actually, I do want to save this Rotom specifically for the uh, Swampert. So I'm going to play it safe and just go out into Snorlax here. Even if he switches out, I'd rather that than Rotom go down to 12%, potentially get burned. I did risk that the past couple of turns, but uh, as long as Rotom is above about 40%, it could definitely live a Waterfall in the rain from Mega Swampert and just burn it and make it useless. So that's going to be the, uh, the game plan. Gonna get Rotom right out and out of here, uh, and the next time this Kingdra comes in, it takes 12 and 12 again, so it only has uh, one attack to go, basically, at that point. It says 37, it's more than likely 36, and rocks do 12.5 anyway. If you uh, get the impression that uh, stealth rocks do 12% on Swishin, that's not correct. They do 12.5% of your health, so. Kingdra is just gonna fire off another Scald right here. It's gonna be out of the rain in a second, there we go. And what I'm actually going to do is just pull out a hard switch into Sock, I believe. Because realistically, if he lets me get up a curse, even though he's outside of rain, if he burns me, that could be bad. I think we're still okay, though. Because outside of rain, he does 1.5 times less, I believe. That should do about 28. So 28 plus leftovers plus burn, that's 34... Uh, then he does another 28 and we can rest it off. Yeah, I can go for a curse here if I want to, but I don't expect him to stay in. That's the thing. I really don't. Um, because he can rapid spin later. So, let's, uh, let's make a play. Let's go into Sock, as he does pull out a switch into Politoed, which is awesome. So, we do catch that. The rain is back up, but again, that Kingdra is, uh, is pretty much dead if it switches in, uh, on an attack. Basically, it has to switch in on a free turn to do anything. So, it's looking pretty good. So, we could go for a knockoff here. We can also go for a poison jab or a close combat. I think close combat is actually my best play. Because uh, it, still, it still does a, a very good amount of damage to uh, Tornadus, even though it's resisted. So, I think that's going to be my play right here. As he does go out into Kingdra to sack it. Okay, so that's, that's one threat gone. Awesome. And he doesn't know what item we are. We can still be focused Sash. We can still be sturdy. So, he has to watch out. Uh, I'm assuming the Tornadus is coming in here. What I'll do is I'll switch into... Uh, into Snorlax on that thing. He actually goes Swampert, okay. Uh, now this thing does not have its... We're adamant as well. This thing does not have its uh, its Swift Swim yet. So I just want to calc something to a Mega Swampert. Mega Swampert to... Um, what is this thing? Sock? <laughs> Sock, Choice Band. Take off the Choice Band for a second. Adamant, Close Combat does 56 to 66, which is not a bad amount of damage at all. Uh, in the slightest... Now, I could go Rotom very easily. Normally, these things run Adamant as well, so that's something to keep in mind. I don't know if Crobat outspeeds that anyway. It probably doesn't, so that doesn't really matter. Let's, um, I think just throw off a close combat, honestly. But I do need this thing for, uh, for the Ferrothorn, so let's switch out. I am going to keep it. He's going to go uh, in for the power-up punch. That's kind of what I expected. Good news is that the next one, nor a Waterfall, will take me out, so... We're pretty much free to Will-O-Wisp right here. If he stays in, then his Swampert is pretty much useless at that point. I mean, it'll be back up to where it was before, after the power-up pu uh, power punch, but it'll be taking residual damage every, every turn, so... Because I expect him to go for another power-up punch right here. That or switch out. It's one or the other. We can't really do anything in between. He's going to go for the Waterfall. He's going to play off the flinch. He does not get it. We are able to get off the Will-O-Wisp right there. And uh, what I can actually do here, guys, it's not the safest play. But I can go into Gardevoir and trace his Swift Swim. And then in the rain, I will be faster than him. And I can Mega Evolve and go for a Hyper Voice. And I believe Mega Gardevoir is Hyper Voice because I... Are we... Uh, yeah, we are modest, I believe. No, we're timid. We're timid. Uh, Gardevoir. Mega Gardevoir's uh, Hyper Voice from Timid to Mega Swampert does 60 to 72. Uh, so not enough. It's not enough. Um... He is burned, though. I don't really have a good switch into um, to a waterfall right now. Like, I really don't. 
All right, uh, what's the least useful member? I think Snorlax is my least useful member because Crobat outspeeds the um, the Tornado, so I can always Brave Root it with that. We are Bandit as well. So I will just let this thing go down. I'm going to go for a Pain Split in case he doesn't want to attack for whatever reason. But he does. All right, cool. So we'll go into uh, Mega Gardevoir. We'll get the Swift Swim ability. And uh, his Rain is still active, but now he won't have the plus one anymore if he switches out. So... I am just going to fire off a Hyper Voice right here. If he switches out into um, into Ferrothorn, it's fine. I'll just burn it on the following turn. Does choose to stay in. We're going to go for the Hyper Voice. He's going to live on two. Waterfall is going to be enough to knock us out, but we are able to eliminate the Swampert in the process. So now it all comes down to what he goes into. Uh, the Rain is still up for one turn, so I expect Tornadus to come in to check Sock. Uh, as a result, I'm going to go into Crobat as he goes into Kabutops, okay? So not the best, not the worst. Uh, we will switch out into... Do we switch out here? Yeah, I think I need to. I'm gonna go into Lax, because I expect him to go for the, um, for the Aqua Jet. Well, he's in, he's in Swift Swim, so he doesn't need to do that, but... He's probably Life Orb as well. Uh, Waterfall is most definitely taking out... Okay, Snorlax, living on one, awesome, okay. Um, and good news is that Sock is more than likely outspeeding this... Uh, after the rain is gone. So we'll go for the return right here. He's gonna go for a waterfall. That's fine. And uh, I have one of two plays. I can either go into Crobat and U-turn or I can go into Sock and just close combat. So it's one of, it's one of the two really. There's nothing else I can do. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be... Because uh, if I get rid of this, right? Hmm. Because either way he gets back up his rain. That's the, pro that's the issue right here. Is that one way or another that rain is going back up so I don't really have uh, an option right here I have to go into sock and I think I just have to go for the close combat right now and if he brings in uh, torn then I guess good play but like that's that's a risk as well at the same time because I could go for any coverage move really I could go for a thunder punch right here for all he knows I don't even know if sock gets thunder punch to be honest with you but uh, we're probably gonna lose this one just because I didn't get rid of the polytoad early enough that was a big deal. Rocks were crucial, I would say, so especially for the Kingdra and the uh, um, and the Tornadus. But in the long run, I mean, Kabutops is only taking six percent, so is Ferrothorn. So not that great. Definitely think uh, Rhydon wouldn't have been any better on this team, honestly. Not against Rain. I don't think we have a great matchup against Rain, but uh, we'll see against the next opponent. My opponent's taking quite a while to to pick his play. I'm assuming he would just go into Politoed, but anyway. Uh, there's the Politoed. All right, cool. So we're going to go for a uh, close combat right here. Now, the thing is, if he thinks that we are that we are sturdy, he's not going to go into Kabutops first. So we can play some mind games. So we'll go for another close combat right here. As he actually switches out into Ferrothorn to give a... Okay, so to uh, break a potential sturdy. Gotcha. All right, that makes sense. As he is Rocky Helmet as well. Okay. So in comes Kabutops, I assume. I wonder if uh, Crobat can live a waterfall in the rain. <laughs> Is that even a question? Um, Sock doesn't get Mach Punch, so he has no reason to fear this thing right now. Just just sack some Mons, man. Just go into Kabutops and start switching around. <laughs> That's all we need. Uh, Kabutops is going to come in here. Now he is faster than us. I don't know if he knows that, though. Because I believe if we were not adamant, if we were Jolly Scarf, no, we probably weren't out speeding anyway. Just go for close combat. He's going to go for waterfall, clearly. He's going to take that life orb hit. Not really going to matter. Now, if by some miracle we are able to live this and able to knock him out with the Brave Bird, we might be able to knock out the other two Pokemon as well because Politoed is very low and Tornadus is also coming in at 52%. So let's go for the Brave Bird. He goes for the waterfall and we instantly die. <laughs> so probably should have... Yeah. <laughs> Should have sped that up, but we are at 14 minutes. We will get one more. It's probably going to end up being 20 minutes or so, but that's all right. Showcasing off Jose's team. Not doing the best job with it, but I, I feel like it's a, a much better team in league play. That's the thing about these teams is that they're they're dedicated for league play, so it's uh, it's tough. You, you build standard sets, and it doesn't always work because these Pokemon are not considered OU, so... Sock has a decent matchup right here, from what I can see. Uh, Gucci is very uh, weak on the physical side. Uh, it hits Ferrothorn for super effective damage, as well as Clefable thanks to Poison Jab. And Rhyperior is taking a good chunk from close combat as well. So, 
let's lead off with um i think empoleon is my best lead to be perfectly honest because uh, it gets up rocks, that's going to be important. Uh, I can also defog any hazards with Crobat. We are banded uh, defog, by the way, on Crobat, just to, to let you know. I'm going to go for the Stealth Rocks right here. If he goes for a Power Whip, that's absolutely fine. Um, he's going to go for a Thunder Wave, actually. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll go directly into Sock here. I don't mind Empoleon being uh, paralyzed. Let's see what he does. He goes for Stealth Rocks. Okay. So... I believe Close Combat into Poison Jab has a chance to knock out Clefable uh, from full. So let's just go for it. Let's go for Close Combat. It's able to knock out the Ferrothorn straight away, which is awesome. Uh, and he's not Rocky Helmet, either. He was Leftovers. So we're able to get rid of a uh, pretty annoying Pokemon to our team, honestly. The next annoying threat that we have to get rid of is uh, Mega Metagross. He could be Mega Alakazam as well, but I'm expecting Mega Metagross. And, like, Sash Sam. Now, uh... Clefable, more than likely coming in here. Definitely, I could see that. Um, I might want to switch out. I'm not sure. He goes into Metagross, though. Okay. You're slower than me, though. How much do you take from an Earthquake? Metagross. All out attacker. Earthquake from Sock. Banded, no band. Uh, let's change this to Expert Belt, actually, because that matters here. And let's put Earthquake on here. This is why we're Mold Breaker, because of... Uh, Earthquake. 65 to 77. You know what? I'll take it. That's Earthquake. As uh, That's exactly what we get off. 72%. Very nice. He goes for the Zen Headbutt. Had that missed, that would have been awesome. <laughs> but uh, no such luck. And Rotom's pretty solid. So is Empoleon. But if he has Hammer Arm, it's not. Or Earthquake, which this thing typically carries one of the two. So I think my best play is actually Crobat. Believe it or not. Crobat... Brave Bat, Brave Bird does 26 min. Yeah, he's in range. So we could do that. Um, we can also go Rotom. I just don't want to give him a free turn, you know? Rotom's really good for the uh, for the Rhyperior. That's about all it's good for. Uh, what object did Sock have? My opponent's asking me. I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, what ob- Oh, what item? Oh, okay. Um, it was E-Belt. E belt there we go no sense in not telling him now it's dead so uh i'm gonna go into crobat right here crobat does that speed it does knock it out with a brave bird i don't believe it takes it out with a u-turn though nope so we will just go for the brave bird right here uh he might be tempted to zen headbutt which would be awesome because we will knock out the metagross in the process and uh, we do awesome so there goes that and uh, we still have a couple of rock switchings so it's not too bad now, we do outspeed the Zam before Mega Evolution, so that's something to keep in mind. If we can get in Crobat before the Zam comes in, that's really, really good. Rhyperior does come out. That was kind of obvious. Um, I can't go Empoleon because it's paralyzed. It's just going to get destroyed by an Earthquake anyway. Uh, yeah, Empoleon's more of a sack at this point, I think. And if this thing goes for Rock Polish, I might, might just be done. <laughs> like, game might just end right there. Uh, so we're going to go... You know what? I am going to go Empoleon. I expect a rock move, that's first. As he goes for power-up punch, actually. Okay, yeah. That's not luck. That's not looking good. Uh, we'll go for a Scald. If he makes the mistake of not Earthquaking, then he would have taken a lot of damage right there. I'm gonna go into Rotom now. Uh, we are faster than this, so he has to be careful. Uh, I'm gonna go for Hydro Pump. No reason not to. And uh, Gardevoir is looking like it can put in a lot of work at this point. Like, a ton of work. As long as I get this Rhyperior weakened uh, enough. He goes into Gudra, that's good. I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump right here. I expect a special move to come out, so I'm just going to go hard into Snorlax. And Snorlax can actually win this on its own. Well, it could if Rhyperior wasn't Power Up Punch. <laughs> That's the one thing standing in my way. Goes for D-Pulse, does absolutely nothing. Uh, we're just going to go for a... I think I'm actually going to go for a return here. Um, I didn't expect... Okay, he goes into... Okay, it's unaware. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Which means I can burn this thing. Which is kind of nice. Um, let's go hard into Rotom. Because I want to burn this as soon as possible. He's going to go for the Moonlight, clearly. Uh, I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp now. If he goes back into Gudra, that's absolutely fine. We still have a few switch-ins. Okay, we missed the Will-O-Wisp, unfortunately. He's going to go for a Calm Mind. Uh, I do have Psy Shock in the back, so it's fine. I'm just going to go for another Wisp right here. We are going to land it this time. And uh, he's going to go for another Calm Mind. He is taking burn damage now. So we'll go for a Volt Switch. 
And uh, what I'm actually going to Volt Switch out into is Crobat. Because Crobat has Banded Cross Poison on deck. And he's going to go for a Moonblast, and he's going to leave us at 1%. So now this Clefable comes in a lot weaker. And I'm just going to go straight for the Cross Poison, because we don't die to Recoil. That's one. Um, from Brave Bird. And we would take this thing out, and we have a... Uh, isn't Cross Poison a high critical hit ratio? Yeah, okay, so we can potentially crit the, uh, the Rhyperior, which is nice as well. And Clefable can't really switch in on uh, Rotom anymore. He does let me knock out, okay, not knock out, but we do a lot of damage to the Clefable to the point where now it's even lower. And if he switches out, then he's just coming back in super low. So Rhyperior does come out, obviously. I expected that to come in. Uh, we do get a crit right there. We get a poison as well. Wow, that thing, this thing crits and poisons? This move is the best move in the game. Let's go for another one. And uh, he goes for the power up punch, clearly. That's his best play. Plus one attack. Uh, he's now sitting at 46, gets a Citrus Berry. We will go directly into Rotom. And I really want to just click uh, Volt Switch right here, expecting the Fable or the Gudra to come in. But I think my best play is just always to uh, Hydro Pump right here. I always have this in the back for the Rhyperior, so it's not too big a deal. Um, the Clefable is an issue, though, if it does come in. Uh, well, I guess it takes Burn plus Stealth Rocks plus Hydro Pump plus another Pump. So I don't know if it can live that. Yeah, let's just go for Pump. Goes out into Gudra. It's his best play, clearly. Um, it's going to take 8%, and uh, we are going to switch out directly into Snorlax again. If he wants to pull a double, that's fine. His Rhyperior is now poisoned. His Alakazam can't hit me super hard. Snorlax is going to come in here, he's going to go for a Thunderbolt, that's going to do nothing, I guess he's playing off the Parachance, and uh, we'll go for another return right here. We're not faster than Clefable, unfortunately, uh, but return did a good amount of damage to it before. He's actually going to bring in Rhyperior, which is interesting, uh, as what I can do if I want to is go into Gardevoir on the Power-Up Punch, uh, but I don't trust that at all, so we're going to go into Rotom here, as uh, he goes for a Power-Up Punch. Yep, expected it, but didn't act on it. Uh, he has no reason to keep this at this point. I don't see why he would want to keep this. So I am just going to pump again, as he does let the Rhyperior go down. Awesome. And uh, now it's going to be uh, Gardevoir versus the three, I think. And Hyper Voice, I think, is just going to sweep up this game. Psyshock Psy Psy hit harder on Alakazam. Kazam. Life Orb Attacker. It doesn't really matter what we make it. Against Gardevoir. Mega Guard, Hyper Voice, still does more than Psy Shock. Well, yeah, it's resisted. What am I talking about? Uh, Clefable is going to come in. It's Moonlight, Calm Mind, um, Moon Blast. I don't know what the last move is. Hmm. Let's just go for Volt Switch. And I don't want to sack Gardevoir. So I'm actually going to go into Lax. Right here, he only has eight Moonlights. Uh, and he's down to five, I think. Yeah, he's down to five, so... We're fine. We can just go for return repeatedly. Uh, nothing wants to take this on his team. Uh, he does go for the Calm Mind. That's absolutely fine. This is going to do a lot of damage. It's going to do 31. Nice chunk there. As uh, he's not gaining too much back, he's going to have to waste a bunch of Moonlights to get back up uh, to a good amount of health. And he's losing Calm Mind turns as well at the same time. So he still has to go for another uh, Moonlight right here or he will get knocked out by return and poison. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is curse up this turn as he goes for a Moonblast. Okay, nice. All right, so we get off a curse. Now, uh, he can keep boosting up if he wants to. Uh, he's probably just going to attack this turn, so I'm going to go for the rest as he does go for another Moonblast. Uh, and we go for the rest. Awesome. So now his Cle Clefable is super low. We are at plus one, plus one, so we can take any uh, any physical hit as well, like a Psy Shock or anything like that. And we do knock out the Alakazam and the Gudra from where they're at, so... Um, let's just go for the Sleep Talk here, as he goes for the Moonlight. Let's see if we can get off the, uh, the return, as we get a rest. Okay, that's not too big a deal. Uh, again, the Moonblast isn't doing too much, so he's gonna go for another Calm Mind, that's fine. Again, he's taking burn damage, so that's what I like to see. And, uh, we'll go for another return right here. He goes for another Calm Mind. He wants to do as much damage as possible to me before he goes down, I guess. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's down to three Moonlights, so we will just go for another return right here. He goes for a Moonlight, of course. And uh, this is a little bit longer than I expected it to be, but uh, this Clefable is annoying as heck. So, just going to go for another return. Uh, if he attacks me this turn, great. Because uh, he will go down to the following. And I can rest at any at any moment as well. So, 
that's fine. Um, 21 moon blast though, so and he is quite boosted. He goes for another moonlight. Okay, cool. You're down to one at this point, and uh, yeah, let's just go for another return. I mean, I have no reason not to. He, if we crit him right here, that's awesome. Uh, we do not, but it will be a two-hit KO. He's out of moonlights, so we'll go for a return. He goes for the moon blast. Does 36%. Not too much. Not too worrisome. And uh, I think what we'll do here is we will just go for the. I mean, I have better odds if I just go for a return. Actually, uh, we get a special attack drop. That doesn't matter at all. The Clefable will go down to the combination of burn and the attack on this turn and sitting at 40% means that I'm pretty sure I can take any hit from any one of his mons. Uh, Alakazam comes in, I'm assuming to focus blast me. I don't know if that even takes me out from here because I have a lot of spadef, uh, but we'll go for the return. He misses the focus blast unfortunately, that really sucks. Uh, we do bring him down to a sash and that's pretty much going to be GG at this point uh, because I get to go into uh, Rotom after and just go for a Volt Switch. Um, and I don't think Shadow Ball knocks out uh, if he's not Life Orb, Shadow Ball does, definitely does not knock out Mega Gardevoir from full or from 88. Shadow Ball only does 49 to 59 if he crits it. Uh, it's doing 88 max, so yeah. He hits this Focus Blast, it's not able to kill. <laughs> of course it's not, uh, right after the leftovers that we gained. And Gujra's gonna come in, I'm just gonna go for a return, it's clearly faster than me. Uh, and I'll be able to go out into Gardevoir on the following turn, click Hyper Voice and win, so... That's going to be GG, so we do get one win, one loss, not too bad, and uh, I'm really excited to use my team, guys, uh, and you guys haven't seen my team yet, but I'm going to be doing a, uh, a draft analysis video on it, it's going to be relatively short, hopefully about as long as this video right here, 27 minutes-ish, it's only 7 Pokemon, so it should be quick, uh, maybe even shorter than that, so... That's about it for today, guys. If you did enjoy the team, make sure to go check out Jose uh, in the description down below, uh, as well as all the other videos that I've done for GOT Showcase. All the links are in the description. Uh, Jose doesn't really have a channel, but I'll leave his Twitter if you want to go check him out on Twitter. He's a really cool guy. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.